Hi everyone, it's Johnny Seed here and today I thought we'd have a look through uh, my collection of picture discs uh, on vinyl. A uh, bit of full disclosure, most of these were bought by my brother back in the 80s. Um, so I'm going to flip the camera around now so we can have a closer look. Okay, so we're starting off with The Hunger, as you saw me holding up in my hand then. Uh, this is the 1983 uh, movie directed by Tony Scott. The, some might say, less talented, certainly less alive brother of Ridley. Uh, it's a vampire film, actually, and I don't think I've ever seen it. Um, I may have seen it a long, long time ago. I don't remember much about it, though. It stars Catherine Deneuve, Susan Sarandon, and, of course, David Bowie, although uh, he doesn't actually appear on this soundtrack. It's mostly classical music. The original score was by uh, Michael Rubini, and uh, yes, there's a Denny Yeager. It's got some uh, Schubert on it. It's got Schubert's trio in E flat and and some back and some original compositions. And what's up, Earthlets? This is the Mutants of Mega City One by the Fink Brothers from 1985. Uh, if you don't know who the Fink Brothers were, then you're not alone. <laughs> this is their one and only single. Uh, but it's actually uh, Suggs and Chaz Smash from Madness. Although you'd never really know that if you just heard the record. It sounds nothing like Magna Madness. Uh, I guess you'd call it what? Electro, brassy, funk, dance, weirdness. Um, they only released this, these two tracks here. It got to number 50 in the UK charts. There's quite a bonkers video, which I'll, uh, I'll link to down below. In fact, I'll probably link as many videos for these tracks as I can. Might just put them together in a playlist. Uh, yeah, they were big fans of 2000 AD, the comic. And the uh, art, as you can see here, is by Brian Bolland, who did a lot of the art for 2000 AD. Um, and the music itself, uh, it's not very good. <laughs> yeah, Zar Jazz label, which is the uh, their Fink Brothers label. Nice rat in a hat. Okay, Strawberry Switchblade. Uh, this was their follow-up single to their big hit since yesterday. It's called Let Her Go. And this was 1985 on Corova Records. Um, Strawberry Switchblade, of course, are Rose McDowell and Jill Bryson from Scotland. And they were managed early on by um, Bill Drummond from the KLF. Now, since yesterday was their big smash hit, uh, this follow-up didn't do so well. In fact, none of the subsequent singles did very good. This one only got to number 59 in the British charts, UK charts. And the B-side is called Beautiful End. Okay, Jim Steinman, Bad For Good. This was uh, Jim Steinman's first solo album from 1981. Uh, now, if you don't know, Jim Steinman, he of course wrote Bat Out of Hell for Meatloaf and quite a few other Meatloaf albums. Uh, this actually, this one, Bad For Good, was intended to be a follow-up to Bat Out of Hell. Uh, but unfortunately, Mr. Loaf couldn't sing. Uh, he'd uh, screwed up his voice um, from touring and drugs and drink, etc. <laughs> Uh, yes, the follow-up to Bow of Hell was in, originally going to be called Renegade Angel, but when Mr. Loaf dropped out, Steinman decided to rename it Bad For Good and did most of the vocals himself. Now, Mr. Steinman, of course, wrote lots of singles for other people. He did Total Eclipse of the Heart by Bonnie Tyler. He also produced This Corrosion for Sisters of Mercy, which is a great track. Now, this cover art you're looking at here is by Richard Corbin. Uh, who did some uh, artwork, he did drawings and comic strips for Heavy Metal magazine uh, in the States. And the track Dance In My Pants features the vocals by uh, Carla DeVito. Now she actually appeared in the Paradise by the Dashboard Light video with Meatloaf. Although she didn't actually sing on that, uh, that was someone else who was just in, in the video. Uh, but the actual video for Dance In My Pants is quite bizarre. I'll, uh, I'll put a link to that down below. It's, it's worth a look. It's uh, very, uh, very 80s.
All right, next up we have Domino Dance by Logic System. Bit of an obscure one, this. Uh, again, from 1981. Uh, this is by Japanese composer and programmer Haideke Matsutake. It's, uh, yeah, it's an odd one. It's like electro, early 80s, com very computer sounding uh, music. I'll put a link down below to it. And the B side is called Be Yourself. And it sounds nothing like the A side whatsoever. Uh, I would you describe it as kind of like piano, lounge piano, the sort of sort of music that turned into vaporwave these days. And in fact, I'm, I'm surprised no one has yet made a vaporwave mix of it. Uh, if they haven't, maybe I should. And Budgie, keeping a rendezvous with the B-side song of Apparatus. Uh, Budgie, if you don't know, were a, a Welsh heavy metal band from the, I think they were formed in the 60s really, but they started making it big in the early 70s, went on for quite a long time. Uh, probably best known for the song Bread Fan. But this single was released in 1981 from the Night Flight album, which is the ninth album. And this uh, cover art you can see is by Derek Riggs, who did the Eddie Iron Maiden covers. I don't know who did the logo. I really like that budgie logo. I'm going to take a stab at Roger Dean, though. Uh, the song itself, uh, it's, uh, it's not great. I don't know. I listened to it a few times, and it's sort of, uh, it did stick in my head a little bit. But it's got that kind of plodding. It's not very heavy. It's not very metal, uh, for the early, even though it's early 81. And the song side apparatus is a bit... Bit mediocre and another one here <laughs> sorry so um competition time can anyone guess what this is and if you said don't kill it carol by manfred man's earth band you are correct so this is a single from 1979 uh, it's very good it sounds a bit if you like elo that sounds a bit elo-ish uh, it's from the album angel station featuring x wings drummer jeff Britton. And on the B-side of this is Blinded by the Light, uh, which is probably their most well-known song, I would imagine. Quite a big hit on it in its own right, so they just slapped that on the B-side. But, you know, Kill It Carol's really good. I like it. It's a good song. What I didn't know about Blinded by the Light, though, was it was actually a Bruce Springsteen song. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. So I learned something today. Uh, I think I've, I've listened to both from back to back, and I'll probably be unpopular by, by saying this, but I think I prefer the uh, Manfred Mann version, really. And this Batwoman on the back here actually was on. Uh, this is an image from the actual album cover. I think she was upside down on the actual album. Okay, talking of Roger Dean, we have Asia. This is their debut album from 1982. Now, believe it or not, <laughs> this this album was actually the biggest selling album of 1982 in the States, according to the Billboard charts, uh, where it was number one for weeks upon weeks. So, yes, yeah, so, uh, some excellent Roger Dean cover art there. Asia were a bit of a super group made up of members of King Crimson and Yes and Buggles. Um, not massively keen. I imagine this is probably more popular in the States than it was over here. Soul Survivor's not bad, but it's kind of a bit sort of synthy and 80s. But yeah, Cool Dragon. Or is it a water serpent? It hasn't got wings, has it? Or has it? No, I don't think it has got wings. And there's a reverse. So, talking of Meatloaf, Mr. Loaf, who is now 70 years old, of course, born Matthias Lopovic uh, in uh, 1947. Um, this was his uh, second studio album 
from 1977. I think needs no introduction really. I think everyone's heard of Bat Out of Hell by now. It sold 43 million copies worldwide. Um, I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it's not something I'd probably listen to now, but you know, reviewing back, reviewing it back for this video, it's it, every song on it is quite is good. There's only seven songs on it. Because it's essentially a Jim Steinman album with Meatloaf on vocals. I think I read that Jim Steinman actually wanted his name a bit more prominently on the front, but I guess Meatloaf is more marketable. Uh, I remember uh, thrashing out this song as a teenager uh, at a party one time. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's like a, it's like a gateway album for for proper heavy metal. And with uh, more Richard Corbin artwork. And also featuring Todd Rundgren. I think you play guitar in here. Okay, so a double helping of Loaf, uh, we have the Dead Ringer album. This was the follow-up to Bat Out of Hell from 1981. This one came after Bad For Good, which was supposed to be the follow-up to Bat Out of Hell, but of course uh, it wasn't. Uh, we've got Cher on here, Cher, um, which is probably the best song on the album, really. And it also features Mick Ronson on guitar for the song More Than You Deserve. Uh, I didn't realise that Mick, uh, Mick Ronson actually died when he was 46, so it's uh, quite amazing when you realise you've actually lived longer than some of your heroes. Uh, that's a shame, isn't it? And it's also horn arrangements on this are by Tom Bones Malone, who you might remember from the Blues Brothers film. And yeah, the, the main song, Dead Ringer, uh, I think that's yeah, it's a good song, but the lyrics though, I mean, rock and roll and brew. <laughs> rock and roll and brew, yeah. I just, uh, that just makes me think of cups of tea when I think to hear the word brew. Uh, not the best lyrics, but, you know, quite a good song. Right, Toya, Anthem. This was her third album. Uh, from 1981 again. A bit of a 1981 theme. This was a best-selling album from by Toya. It's got the big singles on it. It's a mystery, and I want to be free. Uh, if you've not heard Toya, uh, you think I'd say a poppier version of Susie and the Banshees, really. Let's go. I can actually find out who did this cover art. If anyone knows? Um, yeah, put it in the comments. and an unfortunate placing of the hole. Okay, and finally, uh, some more loaf. Uh, I didn't really put these in any order, as you can as you can tell. Uh, so yeah, another meat loaf. This is a single. This is the single four. Uh, Nowhere Fast uh, from the 1984 album Bad Attitude. This song was originally by Fire Inc. from the film Streets of Fire. I definitely remember seeing, and I have got the album, and it's going to appear on, a, on another video I'm going to do about soundtracks, which is coming soon. I think the Fire Inc. version is a lot better. It's essentially the same song, slightly different. I think the lyrics are slightly different, but the Fire Inc. one 
It's just got more energy energy to it. But if you think, um, what's that Bonnie Tyler song? Holding Out for a Hero, which Jim Steinman almost, also wrote. Uh, almost wrote. But this loaf one, oh, it's like electro loaf. It's uh, not good uh, at all. And the B-side is even much better, a song called Clap Your Hands, uh, which Meatloaf recorded during the Rocky Horror Picture Show sessions. It's kind of like a bluesy rock and roll. Uh, you know, like it's a throwaway track, but it's you know, much more entertaining than the, the A-side anyway. Okay, and that's been my run-through of the picture discs that I own. Hope you enjoyed looking at them. Thank you very much. See you next time. Herb. <laughs>